should the coaches be able to decide on whether players get sent off? Well, talking about passion, he's got more than most and he absolutely wears his heart on his sleeve and his teams play that way as well with a lot of passion, a lot of emotion. I think at the end of the day, you've got to leave it to independent yeah. doctors yeah. because the players will want to play on, they want to win. The coach wants them to play on and wants them to win. So they're more likely to take that angle than the player safety angle just in the moment of the game under pressure. So, yeah, I think you've got to leave it to the professionals. It's not a perfect system, though. I think it is hard to tell as well, and spot on, Gus, like in the heat of the moment. But I saw on Friday night, Penasini clear knocked to the head, grabbed his shoulder looked over to coaching staff, grabbed his shoulder, didn't even want to grab his head. Now, the ref ended up pulling him off about 30 seconds later and caught it. But that, to me, was a pretty clear indication that they know the implications of the HIA and they're going to avoid it at all costs. Yeah, and same with what Ponga was on Friday night also with, with Newcastle. You know, got a hit roughly to the head somewhere. He actually grabbed his head to start with and then didn't have a problem. But it, it, from the rugby league's point of view, they leave him out there or, or they seem to be leaving him out there, there'll be implications down the track. So they're going to try and do whatever they can within the, the, the spirit and the laws of the game to protect the player, but also make the game a spectacle. So I'm with you, Gus. I think you've got to leave this to the experts at the moment, on the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Well, another hot topic this week is uh, player salaries with the rise of the salary cap. Uh, there is debate as to whether player salaries and the top earning players' uh, salaries should be public knowledge. Do you agree with this or not, Kate? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I think it's interesting for the fans. I love it. I love <laughs> knowing, you know, and we see, especially with the cricket as well, you you know, the IPL, when the mm. salaries come out every year, it's super interesting. Uh, I think it might be hard for the players themselves, though, because sometimes you attach that to value a lot. And, uh, you know, the players don't necessarily want it debated publicly whether they're valued. I don't know. Other than interest, is it in player interest? A lot of the rugby league ones at the moment, they work under salary caps or this, or this pool of money, and the cricket does the same. So every side is apparently getting the same amount of money to spend. So that works both ways. Some players you'd expect, yeah, on $1.2 million, we, we read these sorts of things. We think that's probably fair enough. But then you've got someone like the Dolphins this year. They've got the same amount of money to spend as, say, the Roosters or, say, Melbourne, um, or Penrith, who have got star players across the board, they're going to spend money, a big money, on players who, at this stage of their careers, probably aren't worth it. And I'm sure those players don't want that bandied all around the place because, straight away, if they don't perform and they don't have a great season, which would be very tough for a side like the Dolphins, they don't want that. Uh, broadcast on a million dollars and they're coming last. Mm. I certainly want to know as a fan though. I don't want I don't want to know what I'm earning here, but I want, want I want them <laughs> I want them especially on Tubby's He's blowing though. our salary cap. Oh, massive. <laughs> oh, I triple in this year. I said I'll just take what Gus is on. They said, "Oh, you're not worth it." <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Gus does it for the love. Uh, That's right. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Just right. a passionate sports fan. Okay, time now for this. <laughs>